think you're changing the rules of the game, but really, they're changing you. It was Lamar all along. My man had a little master plan, had a little guy on the inside, and man, he's trying to let this thing unravel, get his streets back. But we're going to go ahead and break everything down in this video. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Follow me on Instagram if you ever want to join us. We normally do it Friday with friends, but we're going to probably move it to Tuesday with friends. So if you got a YouTube podcast or you someone that's trying to just get your Instagram bigger and you like these shows we cover, hit me up on Instagram. Very beginning, they show you guys a real picture of the Benz T was in back in the 80s. And you see what the graphic says. Benz was the SHIT during the 80s. T got his before he was old enough to drive. And then we go ahead and we start this thing off with Meech running up to the hospital with his weapon in hand. I mean, dude is mad. And I can only imagine what you guys would feel like if something like this happened to your own sibling. And when he get there, Coach Cop is in the building. And Coach Cop comes with a little henchman who pulled his gun on Meech because Meech got his gun. Obviously, we made the connection last week that Meech and this cop was in cahoots. And it never hurts to have a cop in your back pocket when you win this game. You know, hell, it don't hurt to have politicians in your back pocket when you win this game. And so, you know, he was able to talk Meech off the ledge. And then, you know, Meech was going trying to figure out what happened to his brother, you know, and the cop want to know what happened to. Then after that, Meech's crew, 50 boys come in, and nobody knows what the hell is going on. The first lady of the 50 boys wants to know what's going on. Meech's right-hand man wants to know what's going on. All Meech know is they need to get a new stash house because they worry that, you know, who knows what this incident was. It could have been a war. It could have been an attack on the crew. It could have been anything. They still don't know. They're looking for answers. Then the parents pop in there, and this mama is mad as hell. Do you hear me? She mad because she feels like Meech is the reason T is in the game. And part of it is that, but at the same time, T had the be, the effort to get involved. Yeah, Meech might have encouraged him to get in, but you still make your own damn decision. But I mean, you can understand why the parents is mad because they don't they don't have an idea, really, how deep T is in the game, and they blaming it all on Meech when you know this is not really Meech's fault. I mean, we don't know the reason why Homeboy got shot. It could have been just random. And Meech is just looking at them like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with this. And, of course, Meech got his crew to put security on the family, you know, put some more heavy hitters out on the street. His number one guy wasn't too, feeling that too hot because he feel like, you know, you can't trust nobody. But Meech, he want the protection. He want to fortify his family. Then we get a scene <laughs> where we got J-Mo and his crew, 12th Street crew. And what we didn't know was the guy standing next to him was really used to be down with Lamar. And then you see old super Lamar Canaan come across the street, you know, trying to get in with the crew. <laughs> and Jay Moe is like, you shot me down. I don't know why I should let you in the crew. And then you see old homeboy with the hat over here. This guy is gun ho ready. I mean, he unstable. But when I first looked, I'm thinking, bruh, you're not that tough. You talk a tough game, but is you really tough? But you've seen what happened to him later in this episode, and we'll get to that. Long story short, J Mo, and we ain't talking about J Mo, my homie on YouTube. We talking about this J Mo right here. He lets Lamar in the game. He let him in the game, but he put him on his homeboy, who J Mo don't know is Lamar homeboy, and we're gonna see how that transpire. From there. Meech is on the hunt just trying to get everybody. So he go find old Kwame Brown. And I told y'all last week, Kwame Brown was what we, the equivalent of what we have nowadays, keyboard warriors. You can talk a whole lot of shit, but you ain't got nothing to back it up when you in person, you in that heat. And now that he on the other end of this barrel, he started bitching up. And he was like, I didn't kill your brother. I didn't shoot your brother. Blah, blah. We, we know you did. We know you all mouth. And if that teacher wouldn't have jumped in, you would have got your ass beat last week by T. So no way was it this guy. No one ever assumed it was this guy. We knew it wasn't him. They go back to the hospital 
And in this scene, dad is just so frustrated. He's actually grilling the daughter about, did you know that they was doing this? Did you know that? And she's like, oh, no, I cried. And then she got up and bounced. Now, I felt like the parents, even though you've got this drama going on with one of your kids, you know is in the drug game, you assume the other one got shot because of the drugs. I still think in this situation in the hospital with your daughter there, you need to be the calming voice. And eventually they got to that. But the dad was very, very overheated. You wasn't adding to the tranquility of helping diffuse the situation because you were just so heated. I felt like dad should have just stepped out, maybe tried to ask the daughter what she know when he was in a better place. But that behavior drove the daughter into doing something dumb, and we'll get there in a minute. We see Lamar out here talking to his homeboy who revealed that he had to go with another crew while Lamar was in the psych unit just because the drugs dried up. But he know Lamar got a plan. And this is when Lamar starts to filter down his grand plan. He is telling his homeboy to put the birds on the street that J. Mo is responsible for the shooting of T. And from there... His homeboy go out, he telling everybody, and the streets is talking. This is what Muchella mean when she be like, the streets is talking, streets is talking. They even said that one of the number one places dope boys can get information from is the beauty salon. So, fellas, you know, there's another reason you, if you, another reason to be hanging at that beauty salon, not just because it's beauty in there, but if you want to get the street gossip, that's where you go. Then we get to the scene where, uh, Meech's number one man is in there with the first lady of the 50, 50 boys and they got them a new stash house. But here's the problem. She's scoping out the stash house and she see there's damn Budweiser's and, and look like warm food up in there. And then next thing I know, she getting jumped by a crackhead and they lost like six grand worth of their drugs. Not only is she getting jumped by a crackhead, she getting jumped by the stunt dummy for Dave Chappelle Tyrone up in this joint. Look at him. Looks like he came just straight off the set of Dave Chappelle being Tyrone's stump dummy. And so, but they was, she was able to handle it. I mean, this chick is tough as nails, man. I mean, this is the kind of chick you want on your team. Then we get a scene where Lamar, and you could do this back in the day. Because, I mean, back when I was in school in the 80s, I used to see people just walk on the playground, just walk up to the kids like it was nothing. He just rolls up on his daughter in the school and I don't know what the hell he was thinking. I don't know why he thought that she was just going to go off with him. Like, she ain't seen you in two, three years. And you think she's just going to hop off and go somewhere with you? And shout out to my people in Detroit. He was naming all the spots. Bell Isle. Um, he going to take her to Cedar Point up in Ohio. He was naming off all the spots. And she was like, nah, bro. I ain't going for none of that. You need to get up out of here. And then we get Meech. Coming in, talking to his crew, upset. And he's blaming the first lady of the crew, man. It's like every time something bad happens, she involved with it. And I'm wondering if that is that a premonition of things that's going to happen in this story. You see him talking to Dave Chappelle's stunt dummy from Tyrone the Crackhead, giving him some money, saying we ain't never seen him. And I noticed the way his homeboy was looking at him. I think his homeboy wanted him to kill him. You, did you guys sense the tension between him and his homeboy? Um, the homeboy, he he has more of the, the 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 ruthless Lamar behavior in him. He just he wanted to handle shit. He just wanted to kill people. And he was looking at him like, "You about to let this dude go with money? You think we can trust him?" But hey, he let him go. And then we get to the scene where Lamar is outside with his homeboy working on the car, and the baby mama pull up. And man, let me tell y'all something. My truck is going to feel me on this. When I tell you she is Detroit Diesel, that's Detroit Diesel right there. Y'all know I'm very partial to my people in Detroit. Love y'all. Now, that's Detroit Diesel. And when I say Detroit Diesel, it's a good thing. That's a thick woman right there. That's straight Detroit Diesel. But she mad at Lamar. She's like, what the, bruh, you don't just show up nobody's school. They ain't seen you and it's a kid. What you thinking? And she is pissed. And homeboy is just sitting there with his, his beard just like, I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to take a look at this argument, just chilling. But eventually he gave him a little bit of good advice and told him like, look, bro, you might need to switch up your approach. And then from there, we get Meech trying to infiltrate 
the 12th Street crew. So he goes to um, old hothead here with his fedora and basically said, let me have a plan to get you to take over in place of J-Mo. And, you know, homeboy talking tough, but you can tell he was listening. A part of him was thinking about doing it, even though he would never admit it. And then when his crew rolled up, he tried to get hard on me. You can tell he was listening. And I said to myself, something about to happen to this dude. Something about to happen. I mean, what's, what's that term they use, my people? No honor among thieves. You knew something was going to happen to this guy. <laughs> and then in the next scene, got to be more careful. They had your boy Lamar, who fresh out of the pen, I mean, fresh out of the psych, psych unit, two years, had him in there smashing the hell, clapping cheeks, getting them panty draws from a big block. Now, I don't know if they put this stereotype in there on purpose because there's that stereotype running around about the big girls and the dudes in jail. I don't know. But the show went with it. He was in there knocking her block off. Sound like Thor swinging that hammer with every stroke he would thrust him. And then when he's done with her, his homeboy come out and give him some more good advice. He was like, if you really want to get back in good with the baby mama and your daughter, you know, you might need to figure out a way to get in good. So he borrows a pen from the old lady behind him. And then he writes all these letters as if he'd been writing them for two years. And we'll get to that in a minute. We go out here and we're looking at the new crew that's working with the 50, with Meech and the 50 crew, the new muscle. And they all mad because the rumor is swirling that J Mo is responsible for shooting T and they don't feel safe because the block is hot right now. Everybody running around with their guns. It's a mess. And, you know, the first lady had to talk these dudes down. Like, you know, you got to trust Meech. You got to trust them. And Meech number one guy's like, bruh, he paying you. Because they worry, like, if, you know, someone shoot his brother, he ain't doing nothing. What's going to happen to us? But at the same time, you know, Meech has been taking care of these people. And they trust him. So, you know, they was able to talk him off the ledge. But I want you guys to leave me comments on how you would feel if that was your situation. And your leader you know, instead of going out shooting somebody, he's trying to handle things amicably. Would you be standing for that? We go back to a scene at the hospital where Meech is coming to the hospital and the dad is, he's just, he's done now. I mean, stick a fork in the daddy. And Meech get a phone call and they all down Meech's throat because they want to know where the hell he's been at since, you know, the issues they had with his brother and they had to take the brother into surgery. He get this phone call Come to find out his sister done gone in a territory that he don't want her to be in because of what he does. The sister fully knows he's into the drug game and she done gone in the e-course. And so he's got to go. And of course, the family's hot with him. And then in the very next scene, the doctor comes back to tell them that T going to lose his eye. And the daddy ain't having it. Do you hear me? The daddy's like, I'm going to sue the living hell out of this hospital if my son can't see in 2020. And you know what? I'm rooting for that dad then because, um, you know, we've had issues in our community where they don't take care of us the way they should. And for all they know, I'm sure that's going through their mind in this situation. And then from there, the dad goes to his, his place of tranquility, which is looking at the newborns. Now, at first I was like, dude, this is kind of creepy. And then when I heard the conversation between him and the mom, I started to understand where he was coming from. He's basically looking at these kids like you come into this world innocent. And then you just get stained the hell up by everything life throw at you. Almost as if he's saying, I wish I could start over. And at this point, you know, he's basically telling mom, we got to get me out this house. He's coming between me, you, and what if something was to happen to our daughter. And at this point, that's when I think mom finally got on board. Then your boy Lamar goes over there to drop these letters off to baby mama. And you know what? She getting soft on her. And I was just like, damn. But this is a bad sister right here. This is Detroit Diesel right here. I'm all here for it. I might have to get rid of Professor Megram for this Detroit sister right here. But she fell for the okie doke. All he had to do was write a couple of letters as if he was trying to get back with her. And she about to let him right back in. And you know, they're not showing this woman so much without it being a purpose. She's still messing around with Meech. Now she's about to let Lamar back in. She is going to be in the center of a war, and it's just going to be chaotic. Give me your comments on that.
Meech go pick up his sister who tries to jump out the car, man. This, this chick got some psychological issues. I mean, she is stressing, man, trying to jump out the car and stuff. What in the world? Girl, get your butt back in this car. They go pull over. They have a talk. You know, she's just letting him know why she's frustrated. She's tired of, you know, keeping the secret. She's tired of the parents not being able to do stuff for her. And he just basically was able to talk her down like, sister, I got you. And then look at this knot straight from the trailer. He hands her a knot of money. And who knows how much money that is, man. I mean, it could be ones and that's still a lot of money. But hopefully, man, nothing bad going to happen to the sister, man. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, they are deviating some from the real story. But, you know, that deviation doesn't mean they can't still have the sister in chaotic situations that didn't really happen. So I'm hoping that they're going to keep it all kosher with her. We get a scene where T is talking to his baby mama and she's just frustrated about what's going on in the game. And basically T tells her, look, you can't take me out of this game. I love it. Even though I'm, I'm fearful. He basically told her that he loves the game more than her. In other words, it's cause it was almost seeming like she was going to make him make a choice. And before she could get that out of her mouth, he basically said, don't make me choose. Cause if you do, I'm choosing the game. And you know what? She's piped down. She was cool with everything. And then she kept it moving. And then we get to a scene where old Coach Cop hand delivers to Meech J-Mo. Now, mind you, he told, he told him nothing but ruffling feathers. That's all he wanted to happen. Just ruffle some feathers. So Meech is popping him across the head, pulls out the gun, fake threatens him. And then Meech, number one guy, just winds up pulling the trigger. That is a dereliction of duty, my people. A complete dereliction of duty. First of all, Meech is going to be in, have issues with his cop buddy because the cop going to have to help clean that up. Now your number one man went against your orders. I can clearly see they are causing dissension in the ranks with the 50 crew right here with this. Because throughout this whole episode, I feel like his, his man was giving him some decent advice, but his man was also sticking that chin out there too far in the places where if you stick it out far enough, you're going to get that right hook. And that's probably what's going to wind up having to happen to his homeboy because homeboy, he overstepped his boundaries on this one. And, you know, I don't know how Meech is going to fix this situation, but he might not have to fix it because of what we know happens at the end and we'll get there. Then we get a scene where Meech mom is in the chapel and Meech comes in there. She's saying, look, I was praying for you, blah, blah, blah. And she's basically telling Meech, if you don't get out of this drug game, you're going to have to get out of the house for real this time. Meech said, I'm good as gone because he loved the game too. But as mama's leaving out, he still wants her to pray for him. And then that's when we go into the final set where you hear Meech just talking about sometimes in this game, it don't matter whether you pray for somebody, it don't matter what you do. And we see Lamar's grand plan come to fruition. I'm not sure if Lamar knows at this moment that J Mo is dead, but regardless, he came after the number one guy behind J Mo and the crew and took him out pretty easy. I mean, my man got one hit in with the bottle and then after that, old Superman Lamar dumped his ass in the dumpster, you know, picked him up in like a German suplex type maneuver, threw his butt in a dumpster and said, good night, Irene. And now it's probably going to take over this 12th street crew and try to get back all the crews he had before he went to the insane asylum. Another solid episode, my people, but leave me all your comments on how you enjoyed this. Be sure to catch us tomorrow night and Tuesday night as we go live to recap everything that happened here. And that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Please comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Follow me on the Life Games Financial Channel. And if you ever want to join us, just hit me on IG with the DM. Till that next sex is hell video. I'll see you.